What's going on everybody, it's Dilmer and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'm going to continue the Unity Addressable Tutorials. I'm going to focus on how to set up everything in the cloud so that we can actually push content changes without actually having to create a new build. So I'm going to keep it really short and straight to the point, but if you guys have any questions, please let me know and make sure that you subscribe to this channel so that I can make more videos like this. So let's jump into Unity and start working on it. All right, guys, so today I'm going to be continuing the addressable tutorials and I'm going to go ahead and hit play and show you what we have so far. So we're loading the player controller, you know, through addressables. I'm also loading the music and also the logo that you see on the right hand side. So what I'm going to do today is I want to change the way that it was implemented, meaning that everything is loading from the local path. And if I were to open the addressable groups and again, you go into Windows and then Assets Management, Addressable Groups. You're going to see that we have this playground level and as soon as you click on that, it's going to show you a couple of settings in here that we need to change. Right now, everything is getting built by using the local, local build path and also the local load path, which means that when you build this package in here, if you click in build and then you build, this is going to basically build everything, you know, by using the local, local path. We want to change that because we're going to use the cloud. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to remote build path. I also want to change the low path to be remote low path. If you go into advanced options, you're going to have different options in here. If you want to do, you know, different compression, if you want to include it in the build, if you want to force basically different settings in here that I haven't really tried just yet, but you can, you know, you can play with. The other thing that you want to make sure is this update restriction needs to be set to can change post release. And then once you do that, we're going to be able to basically load these from the from different path, which is going to be in the cloud. So if you go in here and click on the addressable asset settings, there's a couple more settings that we need to look at. You can access it by looking at this folder or you can also, I believe you can also go in here and inspect system settings. It's going to open it up as well. And there's a couple of settings in here and profiling use is going to be the profile that we're going to be using in order for us to load different settings. And I'm going to show you how we can change that. But the other things that we need to change in here, we're going to be doing building a remote catalog. So make sure that you do that. And I'm also going to be using the remote, remote build path in here and also the remote load path in here. That way, you know, when this gets built, this catalog gets built, we're going to be using a remote catalog, which is, you know, the whole beauty about using addressables. And then these are some additional settings I don't need to change right now. Let's click on manage profiles. In here, we're going to be setting the remote build path is fine to be ser server data because that's really no, it's, gonna, it's not going to be where we're going to be loading it remotely, but it's going to be where things are going to be built locally so that we can use it on the remote, on the remote cloud server. So this is going to be changed, right? But before we do that, we need to go ahead and I'm going to use DigitalOcean. You can use AWS, you can use Azure, you can use Google, and there's different, you know, different ways. And I have already a space in here that I created. I'm going to create a brand new one so you guys can see how easy this is. But if you go in here, you can go ahead and click on, click on create a new space. And I'm not associated with DigitalOcean whatsoever. I just want, wanted to pick one, you know, that, I, that I'm comfortable with. So I'm going to set up this new space in New York and I can also enable CDN. This is good because it's going to be smart enough to offer basically your level data to, you know, the closest proximity to the person that is trying to play your game. So if you're play if the person is playing a game in New York, it's going to, you know, it's going to make it faster because it's going to use servers in New York. So you can enable a CDN. I'm not going to do that right now. And then restrict file listing if you wanted to do that. I'm going to just leave these as we, we can do enable. I think it's okay for development purposes. And then I think everything in here is just fine. You also need to specify a name. We can just say YouTube. We can say Dilmer YouTube addressables or something like that. Or we can make it, we can just say, I already created one Dilmer addressable. So this one's going to be Dilmer V addressables, create a space. And then once you do that, it's going to give you a URL. And this URL is really important because that's what we're going to need to, you know, to basically tell Unity where the assets are going to be loaded from. So just make sure that this is going to, I'm just going to go ahead and copy it right now because we're going to need it. And then settings in here, if you want to do file listing, if you want to enable CDNs, and then other settings, you can do that as well. I'm going to leave that as it is. And then in here, I'm just going to go ahead and do localhost. And make sure that I replace this. 
and I think everything in here is good. Okay, so let's go ahead and close out of this. Okay, now that we have that added, now we can basically be, do a new build, and that build is going to create, um, you know, everything that we have in here, which is going to be bundled, it's going to be using asset bundles in a way with additional files that the addressable system uses. And if we do that, we go, we're going to go ahead and create a new build, and this is going to be a default build script. Let's go ahead and click on that. And this is going to be right into the server data folder that we were defining in here. You can see in here with my, my mouse on the right. And it's a server data standalone Windows 64. And it's going to use the, basically the platform that you're trying to build to as a folder. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and show an explorer. You're going to see that it has these, if we go back one folder, it's outside, outside the assets and it's a server data. And this is going to be everything that we're going to need to basically put in our server. So if we go back into the server, I'm going to go ahead and make this a little smaller. I'm going to drag everything in here and drop it. And it's going to tell you, OK, you want these files to be private? We don't want them to be private because we want our players to be able to, you know, to be able to play the game. So I'm going to go ahead and do public. It's going to load everything. And we can just leave it loading while we do some other things in here. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go into build settings. And I'm going to create a new build of this. And we can put it in the desktop. I normally create a builds folder, so we can just do builds. And double click it, and we're just going to put it right here. And it's going to create a build of our game. And I want to do this because I want to show you how we can do, without doing a new build, we can update our assets and then see the changes on our assets. But the first thing that we need to do is make sure that the game is running. OK, so it looks like the game finished running. Let me make sure that everything is going to work. So we can double click on the actual EXE. You can see the Unity logo. And we can give it a second. We also have some you know, information in here, initializing the addressables, initialize addressables, and load it. I think I have one issue because it's not, it's not actually displaying loading the assets. Oh, it looks like it did load the assets. So that's another thing that you need to do, right? It's you want to make sure that you have a loading screen or something that tells your player that the assets are getting loaded. Just like you saw, my assets weren't loaded, so I thought the game wasn't working. And you can see that everything is loaded. I can run. Music is playing. We have the logo on the top right corner. And this is beautifully working, so I'm really excited. Okay, so what if you wanted to change the music or perhaps you want to change, you know, you want to change some of these some of these materials. And that's the beauty about using addressables, right? They're in the cloud. And what I'm gonna do is let's go ahead and add, I'm going to go into my prefabs here. And I'm going to drag and drop our guy or, or armature here so that I can see, I can make some changes to him. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the materials here. And let's say that you have a new, a new 3D object that you want to add. In my case, I'm going to keep it simple. I'm going to make my guy maybe, I don't know, maybe, maybe red. I wanted to make my guy red and because, I, because I think it looks cool. Or because you're, you know, your designer decided to change the, the color of that guy. So that's really all we need to do. What if we wanted to change the music, right? We have a music, an audio track in here, which is called the MP3. So we can go ahead and open up that folder. So this is really important. Just, just keep in mind that I'm not going to change the name. I'm just going to keep the name the same. But I'm going to go into my folder in here, Dropbox. And I have some music already that I use for my videos. We can go into music, free music. And I can do perhaps this one. Yeah, let's go ahead and use that one. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and clone this or copy and paste it. And I'm just going to call it track. And I'm going to go ahead and overwrite it. I'm going to go here and then replace it. And now what's happening is Unity is going to load it. The addressable system is going to say, OK, well, that file is the track, the track MP3. It's already being associated, but we need to create a new bill. Because right now, this is going to, it's going to look like it's going to work. And it's going to work in Unity because Unity got it. But if you want to update your players that already have a build, this is what you need to do. You're going to go into build. And instead of using a new build, make sure you don't do a new build. You're going to do an update, a previous build. And we're going to be using, you have to go into this weird folder in here and then select the addressable content state. This is going to allow us to update the previous build of content that we already created. I'm going to click on open. And if you go into that folder now, if we go into server data, there's actually going to be more files added to here. And you're going to see, see, a new file get added. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go now into my cloud provider here. And instead of me deleting everything, because you don't want to delete it, because if somebody's playing your game and you delete everything, your, their game is going gonna, gonna to crash. So you want to make sure that we update everything. I'm going to set it to public. It's going to tell you that some files already exist. That's fine. We can replace them. And now everything should be updated, including the new music, right? OK, the other one is still up uploading, so let's just wait. OK, so everything. So just make sure that you upload everything, otherwise it's not going to work. OK, but I don't need to do a new build, right? Because I didn't make changes to anything in here. All I changed was content. So now if we go back into our previous build, if we go into my desktop, and then go ahead and do build, the music should be different, and also the color of the character should be different. If everything works, we can wait for the assets to get. Remember, we need a loading screen, so and we have our asset. So you can see that our character, you know, is now red. The music changed as well. You might not be able to tell, but if you fast, if you go back into the video where I loaded this, you can see that the music is different, and also the, the player is different. And there we go. So that's everything that I wanted to show you guys. If you guys have any questions about these, let me know. And I'm going to keep making more videos about Unity addressables because I think that's an area that lacks a lot of documentation. So make sure that you also subscribe because that's going to help me in making more videos for you and also bringing you new types of videos that are going to help you in your own, you know, in your own adventure by creating games. Thank you very much, guys.